Good morning, everybody. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Sister Eileen Ryan and Sister Maureen Ryan. They seem to be two siblings who are nuns. Let's pray for them. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory to save your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. And we pray that you bless sisters Eileen and Maureen Ryan with the eternal rest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus, to all the holy ones in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God at every remembrance of you, praying always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue it and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right that I should think this way about all of you because I hold you in my heart you who are all partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the days of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God, the word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm, how great are the works of the Lord. How great are the works of the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. How great are the works of the Lord. Majesty and glory are his works, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. How great are the works of the Lord. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. How great are the works of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. 
I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. In front of him, there was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus said to the scholars of the law and Pharisees in reply, is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. So he took the man and after he had healed him, dismissed him. Then he said to them, who among you, if your son or ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out of on the Sabbath day. But they were unable to answer the question. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. When God calls you, he sends you out. And when he sends you out, he goes with you and goes with you all the way. My dear sisters and brothers, nearly 30 years ago, I was preparing for my day of ordination as a temporary deacon. And during our retreat, there was Father Sundaram. This was back in India. He was the retreat master. And thinking as I was and delving into this idea of a permanent calling, you're a priest forever, and I really felt uh, not so very worthy and uh, not so very sure about being there as a priest till the end of my life, I went up to him and said, Father, tell me, what guarantee do I have that I will be a good priest and a good one till the end of my life? And Father Sundaram laughed and said, I give you absolutely no guarantee. And then, after a lot of giggling and smiling, he opened the Bible to the first letter of Paul to Titus chapter 2, verse 12, and he quoted it to me, looking into my eyes, not looking at the Bible. I know the one I have placed my trust in. You know, Paul is telling Timothy, I know the one I have placed my trust in. And I'm sure that he, the just one, will take care of what has been entrusted to me. Let me go over that again. Paul is telling Timothy that he has placed his trust in Jesus. And he believes that Jesus, in whom he has placed his trust, will bring to completion the good work that he, Jesus, has started in Paul. And to this day, I have looked back to that verse to derive my strength. My dear sisters and brothers, what God begins, he brings to completion. What he starts, he ends. That's what came to my mind today as I heard the gospel, uh, the first reading being proclaimed. The one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. An echo of 
what Paul would tell Timothy to be found in his letter to the Philippians. And so, if you are doubting about something, if you feel a little shaky and insecure, remember this. When God calls you, he sends you out on a mission. And when he sends you out, he goes with you. When he goes with you all the way. God is with you every step of the way. The question is, are you in step with him? Am I in step with him? Are we in step with God? And so to conclude, Paul tells Timothy, as he tells the early Christians in his letter to the Philippians, I know the one that I have placed my trust in, and I'm sure that he, the just judge, will take care of what has been entrusted to me. When God sends you out, he goes with you all the way. Please rise for the intercessions. <clears throat> for the church of God, for all of us, the baptized, that you and I will proclaim the word of God, each of us in our own way, in our own setting, as God wants us to. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, the nation that we love so much, that even as we approach the day of election, we will exercise our franchise in a responsible way and pray that God continues to bless our country and lead her on. We pray to the Lord. For the many in our parish community who are sick, those that are on the way to recovery and others who are waiting for treatment that they will experience in their body and mind the healing touch of the risen Lord who renews all things, makes all things new, we pray to the Lord. For all our children in faith formation, our teens and our young adults that are coming into our CIA, that God will bless them and continue to lead them, we pray to the Lord. For the members of the staff, and for the various ministries in our parish community that give of themselves for our spiritual well-being, that God may bless their generosity and that he will bring to completion the good work he has begun in each one of them. We pray to the Lord. For the repose of the soul of Sister Eileen Ryan and Sister Maureen Ryan, for whom we offer this Mass, that God may grant them eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. What else shall we pray for? Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father and Mother, we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual food. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink lord wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin pray dear sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to god the almighty father look we pray o lord on the offerings we make to your majesty that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through christ our lord the lord be with you lift up your hearts let's give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right to give you thanks truly just to give you glory father most holy for you are the one god living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity dwelling in unapproachable light yet you who alone are good the source of life have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light and so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing with them we to confess your name in exaltation giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death o lord therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection We offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our pope Michael our bishop and all the clergy remember your servants 
Sister Eileen Ryan and Sister Maureen Ryan, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
I know the one I have placed my trust in, and I'm sure that he, the just one, will take care of what has been entrusted to me. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. And we pray that you bless sisters Eileen and Maureen Ryan with eternal rest. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Today being Friday, let's make our own the act of love of uh, St. John Vianney, our patron. I love you, O oh my God, and my only desire is to love you until my last breath. I love you, O oh infinitely lovable God, and I prefer to die loving you than to live a single moment without loving you. I love you, O oh my God, and I long for heaven only in order to know the bliss of loving you perfectly. I love you, O oh my God, and I only fear going to hell because there I will never experience the sweet consolation of loving you. O oh my God, if my tongue is not able to say at every opportunity, I love you, I want at least my heart to repeat it to you as many times as I take a breath. My God, give me the grace of suffering out of love for you, of loving you while I suffer. Give me the grace of one day breathing my last out of love for you and at the same time feeling how much I love you. The closer I come to my final end, the more I beseech you to intensify and perfect my love for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go announce the Gospel of the Lord. In case you're not aware, we have the Divine Mercy Chaplet prayed immediately after the Mass. If you have a little time to spare, do join us. Otherwise, have a wonderful weekend. And remember to tune in this evening at 7 o'clock for the Eucharistic Adoration. And also at 8 o'clock, uh, there is a link sent to you where we pray for uh, the Novena to the 2nd of November, the All Souls in Purgatory. Have a good day. Be well.